Hey everyone, welcome back to Mighty Meals. Today we are making a alternative to spaghetti. So I got some requests for um, pasta alternatives. Today we're using a spaghetti squash. So this is going to be our noodle base and then we're making a really nice um, vegetable based uh, tomato sauce to put on top. So you really only need a few ingredients for this dish. It comes together very um, simply and relatively quickly. So the squash takes about half an hour to cook. You bake it in the oven and then, um, and then the sauce can be made while we're waiting for our squash to cook. You can cook this ahead of time, but um, I find this comes together nice timing wise. So I wanna show you what we're gonna do with the squash. You could just throw this whole squash into the oven as is if you, especially if you don't have a great knife to work with. Um, so you'll just poke the outside of it and then you'll put it on a baking sheet and bake it at 400 degrees for about 45 minutes. And then you'll know when you, when you squeeze it, it'll have some giz, give and it'll be cooked through. And then you would cut it in half and scoop out the seeds from the middle and then you'll you'll use a fork and I'll show you the, the way to get the noodles. But um, this is the way I'm going to cook it. It'll take a little bit less time when we, when we cut it in half first. So what I do first is cut off this stem end because it's very hard and this part is hard to get through. You don't have to, but I just find it makes it a little bit easier. And so you can, we're gonna cut it in half lengthwise and you can cut it through this way so you've got your stable end to cut with. Get your biggest, sharpest knife and cut through. It'll take some work. Cut through your squash. And then you're going to grab a spoon and scoop out the seeds. Now you can compost these seeds or what I like to do is separate them from the pulpy inside and I like to roast them like you would roast pumpkin seeds as an additional snack and then you don't waste them. All right, we've cleaned out our spaghetti squash halves and then just a little sprinkle of salt around the outside and the inside, just to season it a little bit. A little goes a long way in this case because we're gonna season it again afterwards. If you have too much salt um, before you cook it, it can make the squash a little bit watery and we don't want it watery. You can, you can drain off the oil, but this is a little bit nicer. And then just a very light drizzle of olive oil, just to keep it from sticking. So I've got a baking sheet here lined with parchment paper, or you can use tin foil just so that um, your baking sheet doesn't come out um, messy. And then I'm just moving the, like coating the outside that's going to be touching the baking sheet with the olive oil. So it's gonna go cut side down on the baking sheet. And then using a fork, we're gonna poke the outside of the, the skin just a bit, just so that can um, release some of the steam that's gonna build up because again, we don't want this to come out soggy and watery. We have our oven preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna pop that in for about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so I have a skillet here with, I've got a couple of tablespoons of ghee and a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna use this to saute our eggplant. 
So we're making an eggplant and mushroom tomato sauce. So the components are eggplant, which I've diced up into like a fairly large dice. It's about bite-sized pieces. And same with our mushrooms. And um, so we cook the, the eggplant in our oil and butter or ghee mixture. And then we'll cook the mushrooms. And then we add some tomato paste and that becomes our sauce. And then um, you can use canned tomatoes or I have a very large tomato that I'm gonna use instead of canned tomatoes in our sauce. We're gonna cook our eggplant until it's cooked through mostly and kind of golden on the outside. I'm gonna to toss it in this oil mixture because eggplant's like a little bit of a sponge, so it's gonna soak up a lot of that oil. And you can season it a little bit at this point, so just like a pinch of salt. Just to get that cooking started and to add a little bit of flavor in at the beginning. So the eggplant will take about five to seven minutes to cook. Okay, the eggplant is looking nice and golden and it's getting pretty tender. So I'm going to actually take this out of the pan. I'll put it back into this bowl and then we'll cook the mushrooms. and the mushrooms will do the same. And another pinch of salt at this point. These mushrooms are getting cooked. We're gonna, they're pretty much done, I think. They're nice and golden and the juices have been coming out of them. So we're gonna add our eggplant back into the pan. Give that a bit of a stir. And then I just have some uh, dried oregano and a little bit of salt. Put that in the pan and then a, like one or two tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're gonna let the tomato paste, we're gonna mix it in and let the tomato paste cook a little bit because that'll really increase the, the sweetness of the sauce. When you caramelize your tomato paste or cook it, it brings out the sweetness in it and it just makes it that much tastier. And this is a good trick when you're using tomato paste is to cook it a bit first. Don't just Add it into a pot with water or um, your tomatoes. Cook it a little bit down first. That really concentrates the flavor. And then same with when you're adding spices, dried spices and herbs to um, like a sauce or a stew. You want to add them into the pan um, with the oils or um, into a dry pan 
and cook it a little bit first so the oils come out of the spices and the herbs and they taste a whole lot better. So if you have ever made a soup and you thought it was a little bit bland and you added your herbs and spices in, you might notice that you'd have to add a whole lot to really get the flavor out. And that's because when the water comes into contact with those oils, those oils stay inside the actual spice and don't come out. So when you cook them, those oils can come out and you need a whole lot less herbs and spices. Okay, so now you can see it's sticking to the to the bottom of the pan a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to deglaze or bring those um, tasty bits off the bottom of the, the pan with our tomatoes because they're acidic and then some liquid as well. So a good way to deglaze is usually with something acidic like tomatoes or tomato sauce or um, or people often use wine as a deglazing agent. And so um, we're gonna use water in this recipe, but if you have vegetable stock or chicken stock or something like that as your liquid, you could use that too. Some pepper. This is going to look a little bit soupy for a while, but you want to cook this down for about 10, 15 minutes. So because we're using fresh tomatoes, that might take a little bit longer than if you used canned tomatoes, but you just kind of want all of the flavors to come together really nice and you want a nice thick sauce that develops. So we're just going to cook this down and we're still waiting for our spaghetti squash to cook. And uh, we'll come back when those two things are ready. Okay, our squash is ready. It was in there for just over half an hour. We're going to take it out of the oven. Okay. So we don't want this to be overcooked because then it'll be watery and mushy. Just it has a bit of give to it. Yeah. And so then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna let it cool a little bit and then we'll turn it into noodles. So let this cool a little bit and then I'll show you um, how we turn it into noodles in a little bit. And now you can have a peek at this sauce. It's really thickening up nicely. I'm just gonna let this continue cooking off some of the liquid, but it's looking really nice. It's coming together really nicely. Okay, our sauce is thickened and our squash is cool enough to handle. So what you're gonna do is take a fork and you're gonna start from the outside and just start scraping in towards the center. So you're just kind of holding up these threads with your fork and go all the way around. And scrape up the sides and the bottom. And as you can see, we've got little squash noodles. Now set those aside in a bowl. And then once you have your squash in your bowl, you want to give it a taste and add some extra seasoning because you don't want your squash to be bland. So I'm just using some salt and pepper. And mix that up. And mix that up well with your fork. Sure it tastes good. And then I'll show you how I would plate it. So this can be your entire meal. 
and it's really all vegetables. You can make your sauce meaty if you like, or have this on the side of some roast chicken or something like this, but I think this makes like a really nice meal. And top the squash with some sauce. looks like, just looks like spaghetti and tomato sauce. And then I have some chopped fresh parsley we can throw on top if you've got some fresh basil or even fresh oregano. And then top it off with some Parmesan cheese if you have it, if you like. Maybe some extra pepper or some chili flakes. Would be really nice. And that's it. I hope you enjoy making spaghetti squash and turning that into your favorite pasta meal. See you next week.